And I'm Madison, and this is Fox Hill News, reporting from Burlington, Massachusetts. Today, our first segment is Chris with from the principal's desk. Hi, I'm Chris, reporting from the Fox Hill News team principal's corner. I am here to interview Mrs. Johnson. Hello. Hi, Chris. How are you today? Good. Great. I Thanks am... for interviewing me. You're welcome. I just have a couple of questions for you. Okay. What's the best part of being a principal at the Fox Hill School. Oh gosh, there's so many great parts of it, but if I had to pick one, I would pick the students and the kids. Mm -hmm. I love seeing you um, all come in in the morning. I love going into your classrooms. You're doing so much fun things, um, hard work. You give it your very best. I love just kind of sitting, um, joining a group, asking kids what they're doing and maybe helping a kid or two. Um, I. Even though I don't like going out in the winter time, I do like going out on the playground in the summertime. And I love seeing you guys play out there. I think you do a great job actually playing soccer and football. And it seems like you all get along. You're out there on the friendship bench playing games at the friendship table. So that's fun for me to see. Um, and again, I just love um, watching you guys leave. You you leave happy, um, ready to go for the next day. You say hi to each other and uh, you are the best part of my job. What is the most, um, why do you, wait, what, um, could you share three major highlights? Sure, I think um, the um, most exciting major highlight of this year for me is the Fox Hill News team. I'm very excited, we have a, had a new um, staff member join us this year. Her name is Mrs. Sheffer, and uh, she has really worked hard to put together something that I've thought about for many, many years. So I've been super excited that fourth graders and fifth grade students have really embraced um, this new activity. Um, kids are giving up recess, they're writing, they're talking, um, they're taking risks. Um, you and I are doing this interview. This is a great highlight. It's a little nerve wracking for sure. We're gonna be, on um, YouTube, but it is also exciting. So this is definitely my number one highlight. Um, if I had to say the next highlight would be, um, we have a lot of new staff this year. Um, no, a lot of new teachers have come, they're young. Um, some of them have had teaching experiences in other schools. Um, so they are also experienced and they've brought a lot of positivity, a lot of great energy, new ideas, creativity to help our um, work with our um, wonderful Fox Hill staff that are already here. So everybody's getting along, they're sharing ideas, coming up with new ideas, um, and that's been really exciting for me to watch all what we call collaboration. Um, teachers have been doing a great job collaborating, getting to know each other. And I think the last one is maybe our theme um, this year. I don't know how well known our theme is at Fox Hill, but we're really thinking about being um, one school, but many cultures. And so really embracing the diversity in our school. There's many, many different languages and different ethnic groups. We have bulletin board. Our Mr. Scarpula has been working with you guys on self-portraits. Um, and he has hung up our self-portrait quilt and they are, came out beautiful. I love seeing um, the creative artwork and um, the, you guys really captured yourselves um, and I love having you up on the walls of Fox Hill School. So we're doing other great things along with um, celebrating diversity. Um, those are just a couple of um, examples. So thank you for letting me interview you and that's the end of this interview. Back to you, Madison.
Awesome job, Krish. Thank you, Madison. Reporting next is Kastub, reporting world news. Hello, I'm Kastub from the world news segment, and I'm going to interview our principal, Mrs. Johnson. First, que first question, what does one school, many cultures mean? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. One school, many cultures really means um, community. Our school is made up of so many different cultures. We have um, people with um, cultures from Italy, from France, from Switzerland, from Australia, from India, from Australia, Singapore, and uh, we are Jap from Japan and Thailand. And everyone is in under uh, the Fox Hill roof. Um, and so I want people to appreciate their cu cultures and feel proud of uh, where they come from, while at the same time um, functioning as a Fox Hill community where we all work together, we're all working on the same kinds of things, um, having fun with each other, learning lots of things, but at the same time respecting each other's cultures and uh, respecting diversity. So I think that would what I had hoped one school, many cultures means. How can students make global connections at Fox Hill? Uh, there's a couple of ways they can make some global um, connections. One just happened in our school a couple of weeks ago where our help desk made instructional videos for to help kids learn the many different apps. Um, one of them, Book Creator. So we, we put that on YouTube uh, and the YouTube Book Creator um, saw that. And he and our uh, technology specialist, Mrs. Sheffer, got together um, via uh, text or and communication through the iPad. And we had an interview from um, the book creator from England or United Kingdom, met with two kids at Fox Hill, Burlington, Massachusetts. Uh, they set themselves up in the conference room and they were talking via Skype and via iPad um, about his ideas uh, for Book Creator and how he came to create Book Creator. So that was a great international interview um, where we talked to somebody from, our kids talked to somebody from United Kingdom. Another way, which I hope someday um, the kids will do under their teacher's supervision and Mrs. Sheffer's supervision is maybe kind of communicating with kids in other schools um, in some of these different countries and countries from um, Italy, I mean schools from Italy, schools from India, schools from Japan. It'd be wonderful for um, kids in the fifth grade or fourth grade to communicate with uh, kids maybe in Japan or India in the fourth grade and where they can kind of get to know each other's school system, ask questions, what do you like to do for fun? What are you learning at school? I think that would be fun to do um, as international pen pals via Skype. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. You're welcome. That's a wrap for the World News segment. Back to you, Maddie and Krish. Next up is Isabella reporting Kindergarten Classroom Spotlight. Hi everybody, I'm Sonia with the Fox Hill News team reporting from Mrs. Mealy's Kindergarten Classroom. Thank you for joining me today. Hi. Hi. What's been going on in the kindergarten classroom so far this year? Oh, well our kindergartners have started to learn their letters and foundations and we're learning lots of math. We've started doing some comparing of numbers and we're getting ready. Our big thing is right now we're getting ready to do our part in the word vocabulary parade tomorrow. So we're gonna open that with the alphabet letters. So that's what we've been working on. That sounds cool. It is. Okay, next question. What do you like most about your students? Oh, I love my students. They are so excited to be here. They love coming to school every day. They wanna learn new things and they're really good listeners. So it's been a great year so far. Okay. What do you like most about teaching? Teaching. I think I'm happy to be here every day because I know that I'm making a difference, that children are learning things. And it's just a wonderful job to feel like you've made a difference with somebody. Okay. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next one. Sure. Have the kindergartners gone on any field trips lately this fall? 
We have. We actually went on one field trip this year. We went to Parley Farms and it was a great trip. We got to pick apples and we picked pumpkins and we went in a hay maze and on a hay ride. And then when we got back, because we're doing some nonfiction writing, we got to cut apart the pumpkin and they got to do the labeling and the illustrations and it was really great. It's a great way to... One question. Field trip. Sure. What was your favorite thing there? What was my favorite thing there? I think it was maybe picking those pumpkins. We were in a big pumpkin patch and they had orange and white pumpkins. And the kids, I think, picked that as their favorite part too. Wow, that's pretty cool. Thank yeah. you for joining me today, Miss Mealy. 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 It was nice to meet you today, Sonia. <laughs> I am Sonia reporting from Mrs. Mealy's classroom for the Fox Hill News team. Back to you, Madison and Chris. Next up is Olivia reporting the first grade classroom spotlight. My name is Olivia. I'm from the Fox Hill News team. Joining me today is Ms. Doyle. What, what, is, what are you teaching the first graders? Um, the first graders right now are working on science. Um, today they're making an owl project, but they have been studying about plants this year and Ms. Pavlicek took uh, first grade classes outside. We used our iPads and they photographed maple trees, oak trees, and pine trees, and they learned about their leaves, seeds, and bark. What made you want to teach? Um, I love working with children, and I love being able to teach them how to read and do math and learn all new interesting things. What what do you like about teaching the most? Um, I like working with the children, and I especially like working with first graders. That's awesome. Well, how are the first graders using the iPads? Um, our first graders are using iPads. Um, they've been using them with their science projects. They have also done a little bit in reading. They're right now reading books, and they're going to use Book Creator on their iPads to create book reviews about the stories they've read that they can share with other children. They also use their iPads um, in math on working with ST Math and Gigi the Penguin. That's that's it for the first that's it for the first gr first grade in the classroom spotlight. I I'm Olivia. I'm Olivia from the Fox Hill News team. Now, now back to you, Madison and Krish. Next up is Kritika reporting second grade classroom spotlight. Hi, my name is Kritika and I'm reporting live with the second grade teacher, Ms. Dom. Um, so, Ms. Dom, what are some exciting things that you've been doing recently? In second grade, well, recently we just went on a field trip to Legoland and the kids got to write a creative writing piece and then build what they wrote about. We also have been learning about trees, so we get to go outside and the kids adopt a tree. And in my classroom, we earned a class reward and we just had a class pet, so we had a lizard. Oh, that's cool. What was a role model in your class? A role model in my class would be Isha, Reedy Kanala and Davik. Oh, okay. Well, the last thing I'm going to ask you is what do you think is going to be the hardest topic for the kids? The hardest topic for the kids, I think, will be in math when we do two digit addition and subtraction and they have to learn to regroup. Oh, I think that's a hard topic. <laughs> well, thank you for talking with me, Ms. Dunn. You're welcome. Yes. Critica with the Fox Hill News team. Back to you, Madison. Now let's take it over to Rose, who's reporting the third grade classroom spotlight. Hi, I'm Rose from the Fox Hill News team reporting on the third grade. Joining me today is a third grade teacher, Ms. Lozano. Thank you for talking with me today, Ms. Lozano. You're welcome. So what's been going on in the third grade so far this year? Well, so far this year, we've started our multiplication unit, and we're just working our way into division and connecting those two math topics. We've also been studying the Wampanoags and the Pilgrims this year, which is a really exciting um, unit for the students because they get to do a lot of hands-on projects, with the, which they really enjoy. Okay, have you taken students on any field trips this year? 
Yes, we have. We actually just got back from Plymouth Plantation, which uh, I'm sure you remember going on last year yourself, which is a great field trip because we get to see how the pilgrims lived back in 1620. And in addition to that, we also get to visit the Wampanoag Village. How are you using technology in your classroom this year? Oh, lots of different ways. Um, something new for us this year is I have an Instagram account that I've started and we're, I'm using that to take pictures of what's going on in the classroom every day so parents can kind of connect and see what their kids are doing each day in school, which I think they're really enjoying. We're also using our iPads. We have lots of great apps that we're using this year, reflex math, motion math, and we're also um, using something new called Explain Everything. Okay. Thank you for being with us, Mrs. Lozano. That's it for third grade classroom spotlight. I'm Rose from the Fox and News team back to you, Madison Grish. The next segment is Kyla reporting the fourth grade classroom spotlight. Hello, everybody. I am Kyla from the Fox Hill News team reporting live from Mr. Lozano's fifth, fourth grade classroom. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Lozano. Can you please tell us what's been happening in the fourth grade classroom this year, so far this year? I sure will. In fourth grade, there's been so much learning going on. Um, in math, we're learning everything about multiplication. Nice. In science, we've talked about forces and motion. We actually had Rocket Day, which was totally amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it was I awesome. We, in social studies, we've been learning a lot about immigration. And we actually had people from Lowell Mills come down and kind of do a traveling little field trip with us last week, which was really great. Um, and in writing, we're doing narrative stories, personal narratives, which has been really great to hear kids' um, ideas about what they like to do and what they and how they're going to write about it. Um, so, so far, it's been a great year as my first fourth grade teaching year. Uh, the kids have been great, and everybody's just been doing lots of learning, lots of effort, um, and it's been wonderful. That sounds amazing. Thank you for talking to me. I'm Kyla from the Fox Hill News team. Back to you, Madison. First grade in the Fox Hill School is grade five, re being reported by Sonia. Hi, everybody. I'm Sonia with the Fox Hill News team reporting from Mrs. Jaffe's fifth grade classroom. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for asking me, Sonia. Okay. So, what's been going on in the fifth grade classroom so far this year? Well, it's been a busy start to the year, as you know, because you are in fifth grade. Um, one thing that's really different this year, Sonia, is how Mrs. Lee and Mr. Norman and I are working together because we there are three of us this year instead of four. So what's really different in fifth grade this year is that, as you know, I'm teaching science to all of the fifth grade classes. Mrs. Lee is teaching social studies to all the fifth grade classes. And Mr. Norman is teaching science and social studies, but he is adding a technology twist to what he's teaching in science and social studies. So it means that the three of us are working really closely together to make science and social studies even more interesting for kids than it even normally is. And that's what's happening across all the classes. In my class, we've been really busy in science, as you know, um, we've been studying a lot about animals this fall, and we are just putting the finishing touches on our animal enclosure project, which has been a group project, and we're um, going to be working on a presentation in groups uh, for the third grade who will visit our classes and learn about how um, animals live in their natural habitat and how we used the design process to represent that in the animal enclosures. And then the other thing that's been going on, I would say, is what's happening in fifth grade student council. And the kids on the kindness committee and the safety committee have been really busy um, planning a lot of activities for that are helping our school as well as our community. So the safety committee is working on a handbook for new students. And the kindness committee has been working on a fun drive for people helping people. So that's what's going on in fifth grade. One question. Sure. Since Mr. Lasano is gone, right? Um, is is it much harder to like work with your students since like it's there's only three of you? It's harder on the three of us because it takes so much more communication than it normally would. But that's also part of the fun of it for us. 
um, what I love is that I get to teach science to everybody and I love teaching science and it just is so great that I get to do that to all the fifth grade classes. Good question. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next question. Sure. What do you like most about your students? What do I like most about my students? I think I like that they're kind to each other. It's a class of kids who are helpful and thoughtful and nice to each other and that makes teaching a lot easier because I don't have to take time out of our busy um, day to deal with problems that arise when kids are not treating each other nicely. That's what I like about this group of kids. Okay. And you're one of them. Thank you. Next one. What do you like most about teaching? Oh my gosh, where would I begin? Well, I love kids. I just love kids. Um, I love that every day is different. I love that no matter how well I plan for any given day, that something always comes up that makes me have to rethink or change or modify or improve or revise my plan. And I personally really like that because it makes every day really interesting. I think teaching is a little bit like being on a stage in a theater um, because it's a little bit part performance and entertainment. And since I'm a singer and um, an actress outside of school, I kind of like being able to do that in my job every day. So that's that, those are the things I like a lot about teaching. Okay. Thank you for joining me today, Mrs. Jaffe. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I am Sonia reporting from Mrs. Jaffe's class, classroom from the Fox Hill News Team. Back to you, Madison Krish. Now, let's hear from Rachel on Community Connection. Hello, my name is Rachel reporting live from Fox Hill Community Connection. Joining me today is Mrs. Johnson, our principal. Thank you for joining us, Mrs. Johnson. Thanks for having me, Rachel. I'm just going to ask you a few questions. What, co what community events have happened so far for Fox Hill students? Oh, it's been busy in the first few months of school. Um, all uh, Several grades have uh, gone on field trips. Uh, third grade just got back from Plymouth Plantation to learn about uh, the Pilgrims in our first Thanksgiving. Uh, second grade went to Legoland where they learned how to uh, build and organize uh, materials. Um, first grade went to the zoo and uh, fourth grade had visitors come to them. Uh, people from uh, Lowell uh, Mills came here to visit fourth grade students and they had a great time. Okay, what events are gonna come up soon for December, January? Um, in December, it's really busy at Fox Hill. We do have a food drive that's happening right now. Um, kids are collecting, uh, fifth grade has a food drive collection and they're going to be bringing uh, the food over to the food pantry to help people in our community. Um, also we have the winter concerts coming up and uh, we have a first grade peppermint parade. That's when uh, the first graders uh, practice poems and they share those poems with their parents. In January we're going to have an assembly about heroes. I'm really looking forward to that assembly where we're going to highlight people who have done some uh, wonderful and simple things to help kids. So I'm looking forward to that assembly. That's it for the Fox Hill Community Connection. Back to you, Maddie and Krish. Next up is Madison reporting on Fox Hill here. Hi, I'm Madison from the Fox Hill News Team, and today I'm reporting Fox Hill Heroes. And joining me today is Mrs. Johnson. Thank you so much for being here, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, thank you too, Madison, for uh, interviewing me. I'm very excited. Okay, so first up, what does it mean to you to be a Fox Hill hero? Oh gosh, it has many uh, meanings to me. I think the first thing it means to me is um, someone who believes in another person or someone who believes actually in themselves. Um, if you have somebody who believes in you or if you believe in yourself, I do think you can do just about anything. Um, you can be kind to others. Um, you can think of others. You can push yourself. Um, learning in school, being an adult is hard work. And so you have to have really believe in yourself and believe in others. So you can kind of do that hard work of 
reaching out to somebody who might need a little extra help or might yeah. need a little attention. Yeah. Um, so that's really uh, what it means to be a hero, an everyday hero. So if we think of, you know, some famous heroes, um, I think you can apply that, believe in others. A hero who kind of does big things, believes in themselves, and also believes in others, that they maybe can save another or they can help another. So I guess that's what I want kids to really think about and believe, um, that they can do anything. Um, if they believe in themselves, they can tackle hard jobs, hard tasks. Um, there's all, and a teacher will always be there to believe in them. Yeah. Um, and they can go on and achieve wonderful things. Yeah. Okay. So next question is, um, how many students in the school have been role models? Oh gosh, I think that's a great question. First off, I think everybody actually is has been a great model, a great role model, at one time or another. So we have our values at school. We have our values are kindness and uh, respect, responsibility, and safety. And so any time that a child is or a student is following our school expectations like walking in the hall, that person is a role model for others. Um, another uh, good example of role models is, you know, everybody does the right thing when um, adults are around, mom or dad or a teacher. Um, the real sign of kind of being a role model or having leadership and responsibility is that you do that right thing when there's nobody else around. Yeah. So as, when I bump into a child, maybe in the cafeteria, and that cafeteria is empty, and they're walking quietly, or they're helping with the recycle, and they're just doing their job, that's a role model. Um, if a child is, or a student, following teacher directions, even when it's not that easy to do sometimes, maybe you're tired or you're hungry, but you still do it, that's a role model. So I think a role model is just someone who is their best self, um, someone who is always maybe uh, believing in themselves, but also caring about other people and thinking about other people. I think those are um, great role models who go out of their way to be helpful and thoughtful and say a compliment, a kind word. Yeah. So I have seen our Fox Hill students, they do that every day. Kids hold the doors for others. Um, they're always saying hello. They ask how you are. Um, there's just many, many, many role models. Okay. So next question is, what do these kids show when they're being role models? Oh, that's a good question too. So I, again, a little bit of what I just said. Um, they're kind of doing what is expected. Um, doing the right thing. They know the right thing. They're secure and confident in themselves. And they're just doing what um, is expected of them. That's really the basic uh, definition of a good role model. Okay, so last question. Do you think the whole school can become like these kids? Absolutely. I believe in every single one of you in our school. We have 391 students in our school. I believe in every single one of you. I know you can do it. And I know that the teachers believe in you guys too. And we're all gonna work together until uh, we accomplish it. Okay. So thank you for watching. I'm Madison from the Fox Hill News team. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson, for thank, taking some time. Thank you, Madison. It was a great interview. Now back to Chris. Let's go, Madison. Thanks. Now, next up is Sienna reporting Critics Corner. Hello, my name is Sienna. I'm responsible for Critics Corner from the Fox Hill News team. And today I'm interviewing Mr. Murphy, the librarian and a student named Isabella. What genre of books have you been reading to the students of Fox Hill so far this school year? So most of our read aloud books have been picture books for kindergarten and first grade. So all kinds of different books where animals are the main characters, adventure books, uh, books about being thoughtful and being uh, nice and kind to our fellow students. And for our read aloud so far this year, there are books that are helping kindergartners and first graders uh, with their very first reading on their own. Okay. How are you incorporating technology in the library? Well, we're incorporating technology in quite a few different ways. So Ms. Sheffer and I this year, we're going to be working on a lot of 
uh, project-based learning projects where first kids will research in a book, research on their iPads, then they'll come up with how they want to display what they've learned. So there's lots of different ways we do that. We have our green screen here so you can go back in time, you can be in any uh, any place you want to. So like last year when you were with FDR in our Book Creator projects, you can do videos, put all those into Book Creators to send out to teachers. And we can also move everything out of the way in the library uh, so we can do math and science lessons using our new robots that we have here. So we have our Sphero and our Ollies. And even after we've done our experiments and had our fun with the robots, then we can even still uh, take what we've learned and put it into um, a book creator project or put it into an iMovie video and then we can put that up on our blogs and on the teacher blogs to show all the things that we've learned. So those are the big ways this year that we're incorporating technology into the library. That is very cool. I like how you're incorporating robots into the library. Well, robots are pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Okay, thank you, Sienna. Appreciate it. Next up in Critics Corner is my movie review about Molly Moon, the movie. I think Molly Moon deserves four stars because it's about two orphans, a cook, and someone who runs the orphanage. And the twist is Molly Moon has special powers that no one else has. I'm recommending it because you can find it free on demand. Next up is Bella, someone who's going to help me in critics. <laughs> now, in Critics Corner, we have joining us Bella, and she went to an awesome concert, right, Bella? Yeah. So, what was the con what concert did you go to? I went to a Megan Trainer concert in September. That's really cool. So, what was the concert like? It was really cool. They had lights that hit hung from the ceiling in many different colors. Do they have merchandise? Yeah, I actually got a t-shirt there. Oh, what did it say? It said Megan Trainer with a picture of her on it. Oh, that's cool. Um, what was your favorite performance? I think the song No. That's really cool. I love that song too. Well, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I'm Sienna, rep reporting from Critics Corner and the Fox Hill News team. Back to you, Madison and Krish. Next up is Celeste with Fox Hill Tech Beats. Hi, my name is Celeste reporting live for the Fox Hill Tech Beats. Joining me today is Ms. Shepherd, our technology specialist. Thank you for being here, Ms. Shepherd. Thank you so much for having me, Celeste. First off, what kind of apps are students using? Students are using all kinds of great apps so far this school year. Mostly Google Apps for Education. Students are using Google Docs for writing. Uh, they're also using Google Slides for presentations. And a lot of students are using Explain Everything, which is a really fantastic app that allows students to record audio and video and do animation and drawing. So students have been using that in uh, science and in math and all different grade levels. I've worked with second, third, and fourth graders that are using Explain Everything, and uh, fifth graders as well. Uh, Book Creator is another great app that students have been uh, using in all of their subject areas. Uh, they've been working with me and Mr. Murphy. Um, the first grade did a tree project using a, a Book Creator, so that is a really powerful and versatile app that students have been using. Uh, in terms of math, students really love Motion Math. Uh, they like the Motion Math Pizza. I don't know if you, do you like that one? Yeah. Motion math, yep, a lot of students like that. Um, and with the first grade, I've been using an app called Chatterpix that's a lot of fun. It makes um, an object talk so kids can draw a picture or take a picture of something and they can draw a mouth on it and it will actually talk and they can re record their voice and it looks like the object is moving. So that's been a lot of fun. And we're also going to start using a really great app called uh, Lab uh, Spark. It's with uh, a robot called the Spiro. Uh, Mr. Murphy mentioned that earlier um, in his segment of this broadcast, but uh, students are going to get to program a robot with the Spiro app, and we're also hoping that students will get more involved with coding apps like Hopscotch um, as we approach uh, the Hour of Code, which is coming up this December. So 
a lot of Google apps and like I said earlier, Book Creator explain everything. And then iMovie, we wanna start getting uh, students using iMovie for more projects. Can you tell us more about the new Help Desk program? Sure, well, the Help Desk uh, started this fall. There's 34 students on the Help Desk and the mission really is to help students and teachers understand how to use some of the apps that I just mentioned. So for example, Book Creator, Explain Everything, iMovie, um, and then the Google Apps. What the Help Desk students are doing is they're creating instructional videos. So they're walking people through how to actually use those apps and certain features. So for Book Creator, students are teaching other students how to add pictures, how to add sound, how to delete objects, how to add pages, how to delete pages, how to rearrange pages, how to format and design pages in Book Creator because that's heavily used here at Box Hill. Um, they'll be doing the same thing with iMovie and explain everything. So we're building um, a whole library of videos, instructional videos that teachers can show to their students. Um, teachers can also put these videos inside their Google Classrooms, which is another app a lot of the kids are using. And anytime a, a student needs to know how to do something with a particular app, they can refer back to the video that the help desk students have created. So um, they're really students who are eager and excited to learn about technology and they want to explore and then they want to display all of their knowledge through creating those videos. And we recently were able to connect with the developers of Book Creator through a Skype call and uh, two students on the help desk, Victor and Adi, they were able to speak with Dan Amos, who's the maker of Book Creator, and they were able to learn about app development from him, um, and he encouraged Victor and Adi, who are on the help desk, to continue to make those instructional videos. Um, so it's an exciting program. Kids are really, um, they're giving up their recess to participate in their intervention blocks, and um, they just want to keep creating more content to share with the Fox Hill community. Um, so I'm really excited to facilitate that program. Okay. That's it for the Fox Hill Tech Beat. I'm Celeste for the Fox Hill News Team. Back to you, Madison and Krish. Let's hear from Siri and Grace on Fox Hill Rockstars. Hi, I'm Grace. And I'm Siri. And we're reporting today from the Fox Hill Rockstars. And our special guest today is Mr. Z, one of our music teachers. Thank you so much for having me on today, girls. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> What inspired you to become a music teacher? Well, I love music. I've been doing music since I was five years old, which is crazy. Um, and I had a lot of really awesome teachers uh, growing up, uh, really some awesome music teachers. And because of them, they, they made me want to uh, pass on the gift of music and make sure that I could uh, change the world of music. So that's why I'm a, that's why I'm a music teacher. That's great. Thank you. What is your favorite song? What is your favorite music? Oh, goodness. Uh, so I actually love all kinds of music. There's only two. It's, there's only two kinds that I don't really like. I'm not a huge fan of country music, and I don't like any music that has people screaming. Um, but uh, normally I really love all types of music, um, so I would consider myself eclectic. So I like an eclectic style of music. Uh, it incorporates a lot of different styles. Um, I, I really, if you listen to my iTunes, you can hear almost a, a version of almost anything. Um, but I really like uh, stuff with uh, guitar or just basic piano. That's really cool. Cool, thank you. What are some of the highlights that in the in this music program? So this music program is really awesome. Um, the the one of the cool things is that uh, fourth and fifth graders uh, do chorus, um, so we can have a really awesome big chorus uh, with everyone involved, which is really cool. We have a lot of opportunities in um, the music uh, department to. Uh, make sure that kids are getting every opportunity to do every uh, possible um, music activity. Um, so as that's something that's really cool and, and not a lot of uh, music departments have that. So I have to say you guys are pretty lucky to have this music program. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Of course. Um, are there any upcoming music? Like any music events? Yeah, so we uh, we have our chorus concert, which is on uh, December 16th. Uh, we perform twice, once for the school and once for the parents. Um, we're 
we've been working really hard to get to that point and um, we do I'm not gonna give you any spoilers but we do have some ideas for some upcoming things as well which should be pretty cool so keep your eyes peeled for that <laughs> Back to you, Madison and Krish. Reporting is Celeste reporting the Fox Hill Health Report. Hi, my name is Celeste reporting live for the Fox Hill Health Report. Joining me today is Ms. McCall, our health and PE teacher. Thank you for being here, Ms. McCall. You're welcome, Celeste. How are you? I'm good. So first off, what has been going on in the health and PE curriculum so far and what's coming up in the month of December? All right, well, November, as you know, was a heart healthy month where we started with the long chep rope and then we finished because of the holiday with uh, scooter soccer to work on your core skills. And in December, we're gonna work on the single jump rope, the jump club, what part of the jump club do you belong in, and then finish with single jump rope and long jump rope. And then we also do the obstacle course. Oh, can you tell us who received the Phys Ed Student of the Month award? Yes, so for my classes, I picked Peyton and Elizabeth, and as fifth graders, that's an award that they received for being good sports, uh, being fair players, being kind to others, and being helpful to their classmates. Okay. That's it for the Fox Hill Health Report. I'm Celeste for the Fox Hill News Team. Back to you, Madison and Chris. Now reporting on the arts at Fox Hill by Madison. Hi, I'm Madison, reporting from the art at Fox Hill. Today with me here is the art teacher, Mr. Scarpula. Thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. What are you teaching for the kids in all grades? Um, in the fourth and fifth grade, uh, we're working towards making art for our show at the end of the year, which happens in the spring during our spring concert. At this point, the fifth graders are working on drawing feathers in chalk or hard pastels, and the fourth graders are finishing up on owls, which they're doing in oil pastel, and they are going to be afterwards drawing some mosquitoes which are going to have different personalities so a different facial expression or body personality um, to show their body language and the third graders are working on leaf drawings and leaf rubbings right now the second graders are working oh second and first graders are working on bees so we're working on some shape and then we're going to be working on lines that sounds really cool thank you um what kind of art do you do like if it's clay or painting for me myself i like to do sculptures mostly so i like to work in clay a lot um, but i do like to make sculptures out of other things and then i also love photography and mostly my photography has to do with nature or animals wildlife i like wildlife too good do most kids enjoy art? I think most kids enjoy coming to art. Some kids do struggle with art, so maybe it's not their favorite. Um, some of the younger kids might have trouble because uh, some of the things that we do are very small or very detailed, and they don't always like to stay with it as long as that I want them to, so maybe it's hard for them sometimes. I had trouble too when I was little. Yes. <laughs> Um, how long has this art um, class gone on? How long? Has like it gone on for? Um, how long have I been teaching? Yeah. Um, I've been teaching at Fox Hill. This is my ninth year here. So I've been the art teacher with my own classroom for nine years. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, what do you do with the iPads? So the iPads, lately we've been trying to start an online gallery, which is through a website called Artsonia, um, which I set up and I had to get parent information and get the parent permission from everybody. And then every kid has their own account and they can go on to their iPad or my iPad in the classroom and you can upload artwork to the gallery which you can keep forever, which is great. 
Um, and um, on the iPads, there's an Art Sonia app, so you can upload right through that. It has its own camera function, which is great, and you can write little things. You can even view other kids' artwork and go and see their stuff, and make comments even. Um, and you can become their fan. I think it's like a fan club that you can become part of their art club fan so that you could see what they're doing. Um, and I'd like to do some more things with the iPad, um, maybe using the iPad to have you guys explain more about your artwork as we get into the year more. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Now back to Madison and Chris. Last is Megan and Lacey reporting on the Fox Hill fashion update. Four fashion trends for the winter style at Fox Hill. Hello, it's Lacey and Megan for the Fox Hill fashion update. Today I will be sharing totally cute accessories and clothes for winter at Fo for the Fox Hill. At my house, I'm con considered the fashion queen. I'm so good at fashion. So let's talk about this amazing scarf I got last week at Justice. The first time I wore this, the scarf, all my friends loved it. Didn't you love it, Megan? Yeah, totally. Enough about your scarf. Let's talk about my amazingly awesome orange pink plaid shirt. All my friends were asked, where did you get it? How much was it because they wanted it so bad? Anyway, Lacey has one more amazing thing that is awesome and I can't wait to see. Awesome jacket, by the way. It looks so good on you, but these boots are so cool, and I get, I get jealous of myself. My dad told me to get them, and when I saw them, they were calling my name. Lacey, buy me. We are fuzzy and soft. If they didn't call my name, I wouldn't have them. Megan has one more important clothing to keep you warm. These are my dad's gloves. I'm not into the boy style, but I wear them because they are so soft that I feel that they feel like fuzzy heaven. I wear these in the snow when I play with my sisters. Again, it's Megan and Lacey from reporting the winter fashion at Fox Hill School. Back to you, Madison and Chris. I am Krish. And I'm Madison. Thanks for watching the first edition of Fox Hill News. See you next time.